Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, training video on the uh, Novo Express software that runs a Quantion and a Pention. Let's have a look. All right, so when you get on the software, we're gonna be asked to provide a username and password. Everybody has SIM account, so it's a uh, flow user. There's no password, so simply log in. Uh, when you get to the software, pretty much everything is on the main page. Every now and then you might want to jump to the other menu uh, tabs at the top here. Instrument has all these uh maintenance tools that you can use to clean the instrument uh as well as running your qc test uh but otherwise everything is pretty much on the main page um typically what i do is start with the plate manager uh essentially everything you're going to run on uh the quantion and the pention uh is going to be through the novo sampler queue which is essentially a robotic arm that will move your plate around um the uh will be able to handle pretty much any types of plates that you have u bottom v bottom play uh, uh, flat uh if you decide to run your samples in tubes there's also a rack that we can use for that purpose uh so what is important uh is to tell the software before you do anything else uh tell the software what exactly are you going to be uh using so today we'll use that 42 rack uh, from there, you could decide uh, specific modes of acquisition. The standard and high throughput have specific uh, ways it's going to run the samples. The custom mode is what I typically use so that I can decide uh, exactly what I want to do. Um, here, we can decide which of the wells will contain uh, actual samples. And below, we have the controllers for the mixing and rinsing uh, properties on the uh, plate loader. So uh, the robotic arm will act as a vortex. And so you can decide uh, how often you want to vortex your samples. If their cells are pretty heavy, they go to the bottom of your plate pretty quickly. You might want to do that every well, every six well, whatever makes sense to you. At the bottom, we have the mixing parameters. So the speed, duration, acceleration of this uh, vortex. Um, this is impacted by the volume you've added to your uh, wells. And so if you have a, a well that's filled all, of, all the way up to the rim, you might not want to vortex all that. Uh, ferociously uh, so that your sample is going to fly all over the place. Um, we have on our website uh, the recommendations provided by Agilent on, on these settings, depending on the volume uh, that you've added. And finally, rinsing, depending on how careful you want to be about the carryovers between samples, uh, you can decide if you want to rinse your probe every uh, sample and how many times uh, you want to do that as well. Um, once I've decided my tube, I'm going to go all the way to the other side of the screen to the cytometer settings. And here we're going to decide essentially uh, which of these detectors are going to be active during the acquisition. So we have on this particular platform 30 parameters, uh, which is a lot. Everything that is checked will be active during the acquisition. We're going to be recording from these detectors. And so you might not want to do that. You just want to record the data from the parameters you want to uh, use later on so one way to quickly select unselect everything is double clicking on the area and height uh, at the very top of these columns and from there we can just go back and select the detectors we want active um today i'm going to run there's beads essentially because i don't have any samples of my own so i'm going to select just two detectors that's going to be enough for our purpose uh we're going to use that on the area um the other thing we can do is rename the axis so currently it's named apc maybe you want to add the name of the markers so let's do marker one apc so now this is the way uh your your uh, data your, your um, axis will be labeled as you uh, analyze your data going forward do the same with the second marker The other thing I'm going to recommend is uh, resetting the gains before you run your acquisition. Uh, the gains are set by the manufacturer. Essentially, what they did is run uh, eight peak beads, so a series of uh, beads that uh, have eight different intensities. Uh, the gain that provided the best separation is the one that uh, they use here. Uh, so that's the gain where you should have good separation between your positive and negative fraction. Um, the thing here is that if somebody came before you 
and for whatever reason had to change these gains. Maybe they had a bunch of cells that are expressing a fluorescent protein that was so bright that they needed to reduce the gain to in order to make it uh, stick on the, uh, the, the axis. Uh, that will now be the gain uh, that is in this current experiment. So essentially, uh, the, the starting gain is the gain that has been used in a previous experiment. An easy way to fix that is double clicking on gain, reset all, and now we are going back to the uh, default parameters set by the manufacturer, which is typically what you want. Okay, we have that down. So next we can actually start uh, generating our samples, which is fairly easy on this software. Uh, one way to go is to simply select the tubes we're gonna be, uh, or the, the spot on the plate where we'll have samples. Uh, right click, click on new. And now we have a specimen with my two samples that's been generated. From there, I can rename it uh, straight in this experiment manager, simply by right-clicking and selecting rename. Another way of doing it or going at it is to go to uh, the work list icon over here. And now we'll find the same specimen with the two samples. I can rename uh, all of it here. So maybe sample and simply one and two, something like that. Um, this software uh, works really, really well with uh, Excel spreadsheets. So if you already have your samples ready in an Excel spreadsheet like uh, we have here, uh, I could actually copy the, uh, the names of these samples and paste them on this uh, list over here. So that works really well. So as you close your window, uh, it's gonna automatically rename all these samples over here. The other thing I can do, uh, again, with from a spreadsheet is uh, if I have already my samples ready, I can uh, select the wells on the plate where the samples are gonna be located, copy these names. And now from the software, oops. From the software, we're gonna paste the sample names. And now I generated the second specimen over here with my four new tubes. So that's another way of going at it. So there are a lot of different ways, lots of easy ways of generating your samples here. From here, I can start making my graphs and gates. So I have all my tools at the top of the median section on the screen. Uh, I get to use different type of graphs. Dot plots is typically what I want. Forward scatter, side scatter, I'm gonna use the area here so you can change the axis by right clicking on the name and selecting what you want to look at. Uh, doublet discriminator would be next. And then finally, uh, my graphs for the two parameters we're, look, we're interested in. Once we have that, I can go to my uh, stop conditions over here. These are the controls for the acquisition of uh, the data. So the stop conditions, we're gonna be forced to use a strict volume uh, to be acquired. Uh, the software, the acquisition is done through a syringe. The software wants to know just how much volume you want to pick in, uh, you want to pick up. Um, typically you try to use a volume that's like slightly lower than what you have in your tube. Uh, just to avoid any air going in. Um, in this case, we're, we have a lot of samples for so we'll run 200 microliters. From there, you can add a second stopping conditions on either, either the number of events being collected or uh, the amount of time uh, for each of the uh, collections. So here we'll just do a 50,000 events um, for the acquisition. From there, flow rate, uh, is controlled through the software. So we have low, medium, and uh, fast. Um, every time you select uh, one of these preset pressure, you know exactly how much volume you're gonna go through uh, per uh, amount of time. Uh, from there, you can decide on the specific pressure if you want a specific event rate, for, for example. Finally, we have the threshold at the bottom. Uh, as with most uh, platforms, uh, the default value will typically work pretty well for most applications. So unless you're looking at really small stuff, we won't worry too much about thresholding. Now, here's the thing. All of these settings we decided on, 
are specific to the tube that I had highlighted over here with my orange arrow. Uh, this is the tube A1 spleen one. Um, if I click on spleen two, all of this disappears. And I can see that my uh, settings over here have all changed uh, once again. Um, this is because under each of my tubes, you'll find the cytometer settings, composition report, and analysis that are specific to each of these data points. Um, in order to apply the same settings to all of my samples, you simply need to drag and drop uh, these icons over here, uh, probably on top of each of your specimen icons. or specifically to the tube, uh, if that's something you, you prefer to do. If I click on spin two, the same settings are applied to this second sample. At this point, we are ready to run uh, the plate. Uh, as I said before, I'm not gonna worry too much about uh, the gain at this point. Uh, the detectors have such a high dynamic range that it's very unlikely that uh, I'll saturate my detectors. So for pretty simple experiments, I'm gonna go with the uh, starting gains. Um, if you start having very complex experiments and, and you want to manage your uh, spectral overlap, uh, you might want to revisit those gains. Uh, but for now, uh, this is gonna work quite well. So we're simply gonna go to the bottom uh, left on the screen to my controllers for acquisition, I can run a single well or run the full plate, which is what I'm gonna do now. We're asked exactly from that plate, which wells do you actually want to run? You don't necessarily need to run the entire plate if you don't really want to. Uh, select the wells that you want to acquire, click on run. Um, the software keeps sending uh, self-preservation messages. So just want to be sure that uh, you made sure that you have enough level flow to run your experiment. Uh, the waste is empty and all of that. Uh, so whenever you see those, read it, confirm, and then you're good to go. And now we're asked to save this experiment. So uh, this is going to be essentially the name of your experiment file uh, as it's going to be saved on uh, the, um, the computer. It's also the name of the folder in which the, the data will be exported in uh, at the end of this acquisition. Uh, and so what we recommend is to give this uh, experiment a name that's gonna be unique to yourself. Uh, typically name and date should be enough, plus maybe something about uh, what you're doing. Uh, the idea is uh, if you come to us in a couple of years and ask for missing piece of data, if we can go to the server, which is gigantic, has tons of information on it, uh, if we can uh, group your experiment alphabetically, we'll have a better shot at finding uh, these, uh, these missing uh, information. There is a 26 of 22. I'm gonna click on save. And now we are in sleep mode, exiting sleep, uh, sleep mode, the instrument has been um, uh, inactive for extended period of time. So it's asking for a minute to like catch up and, and wake up. So as I said before, the gains on these machines are supposed to be optimized, yet the data looks kind of funny. Typically on the other platform, you would now play with the gains, try to get the, the image to look a little bit better. What you can do with the Nova Express software is basically change the axis itself. So I'm gonna move my cursor at the bottom of the axis and now just move it around so that the display uh, is now my two population of beads that are better separated. I can do that with the y-axis as well. So you can see the gain provided enough uh, power now to separate the different uh, groups of events. So this is all good. I can start my gaining strategy. Again, all the tools are at the top here. Right-click is your friend on this software and then uh, make the data look good for your purpose. Doublet discrimination, obviously cells, though there's not all that many doublets here. Finally set my gate on my last uh, graph over here. So we're now looking at the second sample. Uh, you'll notice that it 
all the settings I said before, uh, reverted back to uh, what we had initially with, for the first sample. Uh, what I can do that's kind of fun on this software is go back to the first uh, acquired data, the first sample that we already acquired, uh, while the first, the second one's being uh, acquired. And uh, essentially, if I want to, I can now continue gating uh, these different uh, population of events I'm looking at. Uh, once I'm happy with the way this looks, I can actually, during the acquisition, apply these, uh, the analysis to the second sample. Now, if I go back to look at the second sample, uh, it will have uh, accepted all the change I made, both to the axis and the number of uh, additional gates that I've added, which is kind of nice. So we're finishing the acquisition. We'll see on the screen a, a window that's going to pop up telling us the data is uh, being exported. Um, and so the data will be sent automatically to, uh, there's that window. The data will be sent directly to uh, the specific location on the computer uh, that is connected to the server. And so every half hour, whatever ends up in that, fold, in that uh, folder on the computer will be pulled to the server um, pretty much every half hour. And so all of that is automated for you. You don't need to worry about uh, the way you're gonna save the data. From there, you can go back to your lab, connect to the server, download your files, and you're good to go. Um, Data maintenance is the same as on the other platforms. You experiment and your FCS files are allowed to stay on the computer for about a month. Beyond that point, we'll just discard the older files. And so make sure that your data is readable on, on the third-party software uh, pretty quickly after the acquisition so that uh, we don't delete your data uh, if we need to re-export it and stuff like that. We're done with the acquisition of the samples. The last thing we need to do is essentially clean after of cells. And so an easy way to do that is simply to go to uh, file new, and we're gonna make a new experiment from a template that's already created. That new experiment for cleaning is called deep sip clean three tubes. So we're essentially creating a new experiment over here. That experiment has three tubes. Uh, we're gonna use again, uh, the 42 rack. The three samples we need to use are Novo Clean, which is essentially uh, bleach, uh, Novo Rinse, which is something else, and then uh, DI Water. And everything is preset over here. So we're going to collect 200 microliters from each tube uh, at the highest pressure. Uh, all we're doing here is cleaning. Uh, the probe uh, after your acquisition. So we're going to run the plate, select all three uh, tubes, click on run. Here we're asked to save that experiment again, just give it the default name, that's fine. That's about it for the uh, acquisition on this software. At the end of this cleaning, uh, you can close the software and log out of Windows. We're going to build based on the amount of time you are logged in on uh, Windows at the end of the month. So uh, make sure to log out. Uh, if you forget and we build the entire weekend or whatever, uh, let us know and we'll make the appropriate corrections. If you're the last one in the day, uh, you can actually power off the machine as well. Uh, at that point, the instrument will go into uh, its own cleaning mode. It's gonna clean the flow cell using uh, the onboard cleaning solutions that are in the uh, fluidic cart. Uh, that takes about 20 minutes, but uh, you don't need to stick around for it. You can actually, uh, as soon as you press the power button, you'll hear the machine do a bunch of weird noise, uh, but you can uh, walk away and let the machine clean itself and uh, shut itself down. That's about it. Uh, let us know if you have any questions or problems with equipment. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Cheers.